So braiding bread, real simple. One, two, three sections of bread. All right. And it's just like you're going to braid everything else. Sometimes for me, I have to not think about it to do it. Because if I think about it, I won't remember what I'm supposed to do. So you're going to, you're going to do it on the one side. Then you're going to flip the whole thing over and finish on the other side. Wait, wait, what? You want me to use real bread? Okay, I gotta clean up the house first, then we'll use real bread. I will tell you though that a great way to practice is if you've got some long sleeve shirts. Uh, in this case, I have three different colored ones so that I can actually see what the braid's gonna look like when it's done. Very, very good to practice on. Neckties, you can use those as well. Um, anything that's you know straight and long, good to practice on. And I suggest you practice this a couple of times. Practicing it on bread's not gonna hurt either. Super, super simple to do. But when you're done, it's gonna be just an incredibly beautiful loaf of bread. Okay, so you saw a little bit of what it takes to clean the kitchen here. Um, dry cabin, so all the water that I use I haul in. Uh, my drains actually don't go anywhere. Um, they, they actually just go through the piping system out to the back where the storage tank would be, but that storage tank doesn't exist. So um, I do it all in a bucket and I just fill the baby out with the bath water basically. I'm not going to make a scratch bread because I really don't have all the flour and everything else ingredient wise because everybody has totally raided the stores on that. But I do have a kit right here that I had and it expired. Yeah, it's pretty much out of date like everything else that I own. <laughs> but it should work fine for what we're going to do here today. Um, and this is a honey wheat bread. So when you're doing this, um, stay away from your your really dry, hard doughs, your real dry, hard French breads and that kind of stuff. Because what's going to end up happening is if your bread isn't soft, basically think, you know, dinner roll dough or hamburger bun dough or hot dog bun dough, um, you're going to have an issue 
when the dough actually bakes in the oven, uh, a softer dough will have some give to the outside of it and will be a much better texture when it's done. So all I'm doing right now is a cup of water, warm water, warm to the touch, probably, I don't know, 100 degrees, 110 degrees for me. Um, and this is probably a stage you don't really have to do if you have a mixer. I don't have a mixer. So we're going to mix it in the tub here. This is going to take a little bit longer. So I've got a cup of water here. I've got the mix. I'm going to pour that in. We'll get rid of that. We're going to let this set for a minute or two. But I do need some oil in here, and it calls for vegetable oil. I don't have vegetable oil, so instead of putting it in here, I'm going to put it in the water. It said two tablespoons. I'll add some more to it if I need to. Oil is just going to give your dough a little bit more moisture. If you do not have a mixer, you don't have to have one to make bread. There are tons of recipes online for no need doughs. And this time, by the way, I have a light set up over here. I make little animal figures. <laughs> Try to give us a little bit more brightness. All we're doing here, right? All we're after here, I might get that with a little bit more oil, is uh, basically just to rehydrate the yeast. And then we're going to hydrate the bread mix. That's what we're looking for. One mass of dough. Now we have to let this rest mainly because we want the moisture to go all the way throughout and that'll actually tell us where we're at as far as our moisture is concerned on the bread. So I'm just going to take this, put a top over the container, and put it somewhere warm. We'll let it do its first rise. It's probably been sitting now for, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. We shall pull it out. There's really just no way around having to knead bread. All the rough edges and the rips are telling me that we're not even anywhere near where we need to be yet. I will round this up though. Pop it back in the container. We'll let it rest for a little bit more. Moose in the yard. I think that's the one that woke me up this morning. Uh -huh. Little baby. Two, maybe three year old. <laughs> I can get a closer shot, but he'll get pissed. Okay. So it's been sure it's, uh, another half an hour plus since then. Our, uh, um, and this thing is just taking its time because, you know, it's Alaska and it's not warm. <laughs> So I'm going to show you a trick that not a lot of people are aware of. Let's move this out of the way here. And it's only fitting right now that in the background you hear a live from the Broussard family homestead. They're just freaking awesome people. And like I said before, this is a shout out to Abby, their daughter, who likes to bake. Now I was in their channel when um, I happened to mention that I was a baker for many, many years. And uh, so that's what kind of got me stuck into making bread videos. <laughs> we're making this video. Uh, where are we at here? Here we go. So I am going to show you a trick that not a lot of people know. Bread, Ziploc bag. And I'm just going to set this over on the counter for now. And if you look, our dough looks a lot smoother, having sat and hydrated all up. And again, I've got nothing on the counter here. And 
and I'm going to call this good right now. We're not going to get too carried away with letting it raise anymore, other than the fact that right now we're all hydrated. See how nice and round that is? Nice and smooth edges on the bread. Okay, it's not ripping at this point. You can do a window pane test. There's really, I mean, this is a soft dough. There's really no need to do that right now. It's not like a French bread where we're trying to develop gluten. So what I'm gonna do with this now is I'm actually going to proof this. Um, and I'm gonna do it in our fun little Ziploc bag. Now, to proof this, we need to get it warmed up. Uh, so I'm actually gonna hang this above a, a, a heater. In your case, put it in a warm spot in your kitchen, somewhere nice and warm. Again, right now I've got 73 degrees here at the ceiling. Uh, of the fifth wheel trailer, but down here on the counter, and you know, I'll, let's just show you what the dough temperature is right now. Oh, I got 73 degrees, 74 degrees on that. Pull it back out again. Yeah, 77 ish degrees right now. So you know, not bad, uh, but I do want it to warm up and I do want it to proof up some. Uh, it's going to cause the dough to soften a little bit more before we get on to the next stage of this. So we're going to let this rest for a little bit longer and we will move right along. Like I said, if you're doing this at home, it's much easier um, than doing this in a fifth wheel trailer. And if I can do it in a fifth wheel trailer in Alaska, you can do it at home. One more thing we're going to do to this before I let it make that final raise. So, and all I'm doing here is my thumbs are kind of tucking everything underneath as I'm rolling this into what you would consider a loaf shape. And I'm doing that because I need to get three pieces. Because this is going to be a three braid bread. So now you're just going to I'm just going to take these three pieces. Come on. Don't make a liar out of me. And roll them up. into balls that we're going to use to form our final braids with, our final loaves that we're going to braid with. Because it can proof just as well like this as it can in, in the single piece. But this should save me one step. And when it comes to bread, now we wait is a common term. Okay, let's see where we're at now. So at this point, we need to get our braids ready for the bread. Do that again slow so you can see it. I don't want to get the seam all on one side there. Okay. So all I'm doing here, find your smoothest side and we'll make that, this will be the smoothest side, we'll make that the bottom here. Smash it out, and I'm pressing down pretty firmly with this part of my palm here, right here on the bottom, okay? So now we've got kind of an oval shape here, and then we're going to just take it, roll it, and keep your thumb, if you can see that there, flip it around so you can see it, you're going to keep your thumb right underneath there, and then we're going to use that to let all the air out as we go, so you don't end up with a ton of air in the middle of it, okay? And then same thing here on this one, all right? We're going to keep our thumb in there and then we get the seam all in one section, seam down, roll it out a little bit. Kind of a multi-stage rest here. If you try and roll this out too far to begin with, you'll rip it. We don't want to do that. So right now we're can't really tell by looking at that, but we're probably about six inches long on each one of these. When we're done, we're going to want them to be about a foot, so they're going to be about about that long there when we're done, all each of them. I've got a big one, and that's fine. I'll throw that one in the middle, and I'll show you how it will actually benefit you to have one bigger one and two of the smaller ones. But for right now, here, let's do this. We're going to let that rest. Throw a couple of paper towels over the top of it. And that's just to stop anything from falling into it. At this point, we're just going to leave them sitting on the counter until we get to the next stage. 
Okay, let's see if we can get a little better angle here. I do have a camera on right here to show you what I'm going to do on this end, and then I've got this camera in so that we can see it. The dough's been resting now for, oh, probably another 20 minutes or so, and like I said, uh, the reason for this last rest was mainly uh, to make sure that the dough will stretch easier when you get to this stage right now. So, uh, put these off to the side. There's our seam. Okay, so now we're just going to press it down again. Right where we had our seam. Okay, and then we're going to fold that up, put your finger in there, and see if I can do this with my arm twisted. Tuck it so that you're going to get a nice even seam line. And then, using that part of your hand again, and getting our seam down on the bottom. So here's where we started. Here's where we're at. So much, you know, we've just picked up about this much more room on the, on the size of that roll. But now I can take it and stretch it out a little more as well. And while sometimes you can get it in two, we might have to go a third little rest here. We'll see. I'll see if it stretches out a little bit more. There's our seam all on one line. We'll do the same thing to the next one. There's our seam. Press it down. Tuck and roll. And I'm just using this part of my fingers here, the pads of your fingers, to push that down nice and tight. So you get a nice tight seam here. You don't want this seam to open up. There's our single line of seam. When you're rolling to get your length, you're going to start in the middle and, and apply even pressure with both your hands. And a lot of what I'm doing here is on my fingers and this first part of my hand. And that one's good. But probably almost double in length right now. It's about a 10 minute rest. Uh, we'll slide you folks over to the side and we'll give it its final rollout again. So, one, two, three. Okay, now we're back to the same stage that we were with the t shirt sleeves. <laughs> the technique of braiding, if you're a, uh, if you're a woman who's ever had hair, or daughters that wanted their hair braided, then you're already used to how, how to do this. And, and most men, unless you've had daughters, you probably don't know how to braid hair. Um, and most of them don't know how to braid, but it's the same technique. One, two, three. Over, 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 over. Over, over. And just keep going till you get to a point down there at the end. You see what that looks like? Okay. I'm going to undo this again real quick. We're going to do it again. So... This is your center core, and it's going to stay your center core through the whole process of making this, even though you are going to flip it. Everything that you're doing is focused on here. So at about the halfway mark here, right, on, on these braids, or on these, these three thin loaves, over from the outside, over from the outside, over, 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 and just keep going until you get to the end, and then when you get to the end... Use your palm to push it down. Now, to finish this braid, the easiest way is to pick the whole loaf up, turn it over, and now we're looking at the bottom of the loaf, because here's all the seams again. Our seams are still here. From there, it's over, 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 and the point, okay? Now we're looking at the bottom of the loaf. So if we take this loaf now, and turn it back over. There you have it. In this camera here, let me slide it over so you can see it a little bit better. Okay? Just a simple three braid design to take any bread formula or recipe that you have and just make it completely elegant. 
Uh, I will touch down here with a little bit of water just to close that seam up, and I'll probably do the same thing down here so that they don't open up when they're baking. Uh, I'll be right back, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to top this off because it's better to top this off before it rises and, and proofs in the, you know, before you bake it than it is to wait and, and risk knocking the top of this, knocking the loaf down after it's already proofed back up. Okay, so now we have to top it. You don't have to top it. You could bake the loaf just like you have it here, but I always put something on top, and I'll shoot up a picture of um, what it looked like pretty much the last time I made these, maybe 12 years ago. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, one with sesame seed and one with poppy seed. So you can throw whatever you want on top here, but I thought it'd be neat to do something different, and since this is a honey wheat bread, we already have our, our sweet component, and I want to maybe do a savory topping on the outside so that we'll have a combination of sweet and savory when we're done. So... With a brush, I don't have one. I do, but I, I don't want to dig it out because it's probably ha got, you know, halfway full of barbecue sauce as well. I'm going to take some water and just put it across the top of this loaf. And we're going to do this for two reasons. One, we need something that will cause the topping to stick to this bread. As a matter of fact, I'm even going to go a little bit further and I'm going to pour a little bit more water here in the pan because I'm going to proof this in my oven with my pilot light on. Um, and that'll add some moisture to it while it proofs. Uh, so proof is, is basically just the rising of the dough um, under warmer conditions. And um, what you want is a, a moist area to do it in. But what I'm going to do here, and I've got the other camera on as well. All right. Got my daughters with me again. My daughters are always with me. So I'm going to take kosher salt. Okay, and I'm just going to lightly sprinkle a little bit on the outside of the bread. And I know, stick with me on this. It sounds crazy. Why are you putting salt on the outside of the bread? Well, because we want that sweet and savory combination on this. Put it over here. And then I'm going to use this. And boom. There we go. Rosemary. Okay. Touch the screen again and make sure it's focused in on the bread. It is. And, I mean, I'm going to kind of crush this because if you look at it, right, rosemary's in big chunks. So I'm going to basically take it and crush it up just a little bit in my hand. And then I'm going to lightly dust the outside of this loaf. With just a little bit of rosemary. Mm, yeah, a little more. I like rosemary. And you can top this with whatever you want. Understand too that it may look like, oh my gosh, there's a ton of rosemary on top of that loaf, but this loaf, if everything works right, is going to proof up to be a bigger loaf when it's done. I didn't have any parchment paper. Uh, so we're just using aluminum foil on the pan. I'm going to get this in the oven and get it to rising in the oven on its final proof before we bake it. We're going to bake this at 350 degrees. Generally in your oven, it'd probably be about 30 minutes. In my oven, it's probably going to be closer to 20, 25, because my oven just runs really, really hot. Uh, and then we'll see what this looks like when it's done. I think it's going to be yummy. So what did we end up with? It's gorgeous, huh? And it's yummy, yummy, yummy. This is still warm right out of the oven. I'm going to go ahead and break off a piece and get some butter on it. Have myself a slice of bread. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be honest with you, this is actually the second loaf that I ended up having to do because the first loaf, uh-uh, the yeast just would not last. Um, it was way too old, so I did have some yeast in my cupboard, it turned out, and went ahead and used that. Plumped up very nicely. So braided bread, let me know if you want to see me do something different. The best part about making these videos is the sampling when I'm done. Mm. Mm -mm.
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.